Welcome to Frontline Systems webinar on data mining using Excel Miner platform, our advanced product for building predictive models. My name is Dr. Sima Maliki. I am consulting lead and modeling specialist at Frontline Solvers. During this presentation, if you have any questions or comments, please type them into the chat box to be answered at the end as time allows. I strive to remain within the promised time frame, yet to thoroughly cover all the material, sometimes it takes a few minutes longer. I very much appreciate your cooperation. Almost every action in your business generates data, your sales transactions, customer interactions, even clicks on your website. This data can be a valuable strategic asset when used in your decision making. This is accomplished with data mining. Data mining allows you to find and extract useful information and discover patterns from your large data sets. Excel Miner is a powerful tool for you to gain insights from your data via data exploration, visualization, forecasting, and data mining in Excel without any need for programming. And this is a time saver to help you get valuable results quickly. Today, we explore how Excel Miner platform can benefit you and how easy it is to use. Together, we'll review typical applications including data analysis with visualization, classification tree algorithm for classifying wine samples using the boosting ensemble method, text mining to process and analyze two internet news groups, and feature selection. Then, we'll forecast using time series smoothing techniques the number of passengers for an airline. To start, let's briefly walk through Excel Miner platform features. Starting with sampling. Sampling tools in Excel Miner enable you to draw a sample of data from virtually any external database, such as Microsoft Access, SQL Server, IBM's DB2, Oracle, and Power Pivot. In a recent release, you can get a sample from Apache Spark Big Data clusters. Furthermore, you can import a sample of text documents from a file folder to mine for insights. Most of you would agree that Excel provides ease and speed for building models, and it is familiar to everyone. You can also use Excel for all your analytic needs, and this permits some synergy by doing them together. And Excel is such a good database client and very powerful. With Microsoft Power Pivot add-in, a full database underneath spreadsheets, you essentially have SQL Server in the memory with Excel. This allows you to apply data mining methods to your large data sets using Excel Miner. With Power Query, you can extract, transform, and load data from a huge range of sources, from enterprise on-premise databases to cloud-based public data stores on Windows Azure Data Marketplace. Please note, Power Pivot and Power Query are actually in the box with Excel 2013, and you just have to activate them. Now, let's switch to Excel. This is the Excel Miner platform ribbon you can use to apply the full power of data exploration, visualization, and predictive analytics. The Explore tool allows you to visualize your data and provides you with feature selection capability, which we will practice today. With Excel Miner Chart Wizard, you can create eight different types of charts, from the simple bar and line charts to scatter plots to more complex the scatter plot matrices and parallel coordinates. Excel Miner offers a complete set of data handling utilities to clean your data. This includes missing data handling, 
been in continuous data transforming categorical variable and principal components analysis. Next, let's talk about text mining tool, allowing you to gain insights from your unstructured text data. As you can see here, Excel Miner contains built-in time series analysis tools. It includes the ability to partition a time series data set, the ability to fit a, a model using ARIMA with or without seasonal components, and four types of smoothing techniques. In addition, with this partition, you can partition your data to training, validation and test sets using standard partition or partition with oversampling so a model can be trained and then evaluated. This can be done using this button or the partition on the fly feature which we will be using today. Excel Miner methods include both supervised and unsupervised learning techniques. You can have access to 10 supervised learning techniques including six classification and four prediction algorithms. Furthermore, you can build better classification and prediction models using ensemble methods that are accessible via, via these cascading menus in prediction and also in classification. And they're available in Excel Miner platform. Excel Miner for unsupervised learning algorithms include two clustering methods, principal component analysis and uh, that's available from transform and then association rules. Now on to visualization. Let's start with opening the one sample data set. To access this example and all other databases you need to click on help from the ribbon and click on examples. Now let's click on forecasting data mining examples. Here, let's scroll down to find the wine data set. Here's the data set with information about wine, including 13 variables that describe different properties of wine from three vineyards. Our goal is to assign a wine classification to each record. So let's first use the chart wizard to see what it shows. Select the cell within the data and then click on Excel Miner Platform, click on Explore, and then Chart Wizard. Here, let's choose Scatter Plot Matrix, and then click on Next. I'm going to choose four variables, alcohol, selenides, and color intensity. Okay, now, now I click Finish. Here is the result. Let me increase the size. Okay, so on the diagonal we have histograms of our variables and on either side we have the scatter plots. For example, in this scatter plot to, on the top, if you pay closer attention, we would see a distinct cluster of observations. We can select the data points in this cluster with the cursor and immediately they turn red not only in this chart, but also in all other charts. You can then look to the right and see uh, and find out more details on actual records or these observations that we are turned red. For example, most of them seem to belong to wine type B. So I'm going to remove this selection now by clicking on the graph and then I want to use the color by feature to see what it can tell us. Uh, so in the upper right corner, you, you can see this drop down menu and let's color by type. Okay, so now we can see that all of those observations belong to wine type B. This vis visualization is not enough for our purposes to draw a line to classify records. So let's move on to building a classifier model which would automatically look at this data and fits a model to indicate which vineyard or actually type the wine comes from. So let's close this chart. You can save the chart like chart one and click save 
and to, the way to ac access this chart is to click on Explore Existing Charts, and you can access chart one. Now, select a cell within the data. I'm going to use Classification 3 algorithm, and then click on uh, Classify, Classification 3, let's choose Single Tree. Okay, here we want to choose Type as our output variable, and all other variables as our selected variables. Now let's click on Next. Here, let's keep the default values for maximum number of three levels, minimum number of records in a terminal node, and let's check this partition data checkbox. This is our partition on the fly feature. So you could notice there is a partition button in the top in the data mining group. You could use that one, partition your data initially, and then apply the models, but this is available, partition on the fly. So I'm going to accept all the defaults and click on Next. Here I'm just going to just choose Full Free and click on Finish. Okay, here is the output of Classification 3 algorithm. This is the output navigator. You can click on any of the hyperlinks to, uh, to reach to various sections of the output. So um, I want to show you first the full tree. This is the full tree. And then let's take a look at the um, training data scoring summary report or the confusion matrix. This is the classification confusion matrix training data scoring summary report. So the confusion matrix displays counts for cases that were correctly and incorrectly classified in the training and validation data sets. So this confusion matrix shows that there was one case misclassified in the training data resulting in a percent error of 0.9. Now, a little bit down, you see the validation data confusion matrix. It shows that there were seven cases misclassified in the validation data, resulting in a person error of 9.8%. Now, we want to compare a single tree results with those from classification three ensemble boosting method. Just before that, let's go back to our slides and review some more information about these algorithms. Ensemble methods can help us build better classification and prediction models. Ensemble is a technique for combining multiple weak learners in an attempt to create a strong learner by taking a weighted vote of their individual classifications or predictions. And then these algorithms, these ensemble methods are available for both classification and prediction algorithms for neural networks and classification tree and regression tree for prediction. Now let's go back to Excel and see how we can actually use this. So I'm going to go back to this one data set. Now select a cell within the data, click on classify, classification three. This time let's choose boosting ensemble method. Now Excel Miner automatically recalls and repeats the selected variables. And we want to make sure type is selected as our output variable. Let's click on Next. Here, I'm going to leave default selections for boosting algorithm, out of boost one, it was M1. Excel Miner offers three different variations of boosting. The difference is the way in which the weights assigned to each observational record are updated. So uh, let's keep it. And then let's leave the number of weak learners as the default value of 50. Here, a weak learner is a classification three. So this will tell Excel Miner to construct 50 different classification trees during the run. Train each one on different subsets of data and combine the results to get a better classification. Let's click on next. Oh, be, before I forget, I have to click partition the data because I haven't partitioned the data previously. And then I click on next. Okay, I'm going to accept all default settings and click on finish. Okay, here are the results. The output of classification three boosting algorithm. 
Let's click on Ensemble Details. As you can see, Excel Miner assigns a weight to each of the 50 weak learners. And here are the, here are the final weights. The importance percentage for each variable measures the variable's contribution in re reducing the total misclassification error. Now let's scroll down to training data scoring summary report to view the confusion matrix. So you can see no records were misclassified in the training data set and only two records were misclassified in the validation data resulting in a person error of 2.8%. As we can see, classification tree ensemble methods are very powerful and typically result in better performance than a single tree. Now on to our next topic, which is text mining. Excel Miner text mining tool allows you to process and analyze your unstructured text data so you can quickly and fully utilize the power of this data to enable better decision making. This tool can analyze text found in cells in a worksheet, fields in a database, or in a separate text document. So now, let's start with importing some text documents into Excel. Let me show you that the example I'm going to use is text mining documents available from examples. You need to uh, save this file, a folder, and then unzip it. So let me open an empty workbook. Okay, so these text files are from a well-known text data set which consists of messages collected from two different internet news groups, autos and electronics. Again, this data is available in the examples. You save it and then unzip it. I've already, I've already unzipped the folder. So I am going to extract a sample of text files from the file folder. Excel Miner can work with text that is in a column in a spreadsheet or text that is in a column of database or text that is in a series of files, text files in a folder, and that is what we are going to do here. So on the ribbon, click on Get Data, choose Import from File Folder. In this dialog, now let's click on Browse. And, okay, I've saved them here. Let me, okay, I go to Auto Subfolder, make the file type to All Files, and then select all of them and click Open. Now click on this button to move all of them to selected files. Again, I'm going to repeat the same steps, browse, and go to Electronic Subfolder, select set the type files, file type to all files, select all of them and click open. And then we're going to click on this button to move them to uh, selected files. Now I'm going to select the radio button, sample from selected files. Just I'm going to get a sample of, for example, total and size 300. Then we can keep all the default settings. Okay, here, please note that in the output section, uh, I'm, I have choose or automatically write file path is selected. Excel Miner can either import text directly into spreadsheet if a single document will fit into a single set. There are some limits on the number of characters per cell and the limits are 32,767. So for this one, it, uh, it, is, it is writing the file paths. So let's click OK. And uh, OK. Here, Excel Miner recorded the file path, which is what we're doing here. Now we have, the, uh, we have imported the text files. You can see the ex spreadsheet XLM sample file but it includes the file paths, and there's no text as expected. 
again during the run the, during um, during the text mining we will read the files through these file passes and you can see that the name of this column including the file paths is text there okay we are going to select the cell within this data and click on text icon now let's select the column text var and move it to selected text variable now excel miner can read all the text within all those paths during the analysis let's click on uh, pre-processing tab pre-processing eliminates common words so text mining can focus on the words that carry the most meaning I'm going to keep the default settings for stop words, stemming, and case normalization. All of these are discussed in our user guide in depth. Now let's click on next or directly click on representation. This time let's click on next. Okay. Excel Miner will create a matrix of terms and their frequencies. If perform latent semantic indexing is checked, Excel Miner will extract concepts from a set of documents where a concept represents a cluster of words that tend to occur together in the text of different documents basically Excel Miner counts how many words there are occurring in each document and then in latent semantic indexing we convert that into a smaller number of concepts okay now let's go to output options tab Um, maybe we want to make sure concept document is selected. Let's choose the term concept 2. I want to make sure the zips plot is selected. I want to make sure script plot and then term scatter plot are selected and click on finish. Okay, the text mining analysis is finished. We can see pop up charts will appear. Let's start with zips plot okay this plot shows the most frequent words commonly occurring this is the one that most commonly occurs uh, if I hover it over it you can it can show that term is for example the rank is 2 and then it's kind of article I guess and then there's like here you will see the less uh, commonly occurring words like the term admit and rank is 804. Then uh, let's close SIPS plot. Let me show you the script plot. This plot shows the relative importance of the extracted concepts. And then we have the term concept scatter plot. For example, you can see on the X coordinate we have concept one. Concept one is really a cluster of words like car, drive, system, auto, words that more often found to occur together. You can actually change these concepts on the axis. For example, I can kind of change this one to 14, and you can see that the cluster of words migrate over in terms of their frequency toward concept 14. And you can see this cloud is moving. Okay, let's close this one. Now, in the TM uh, LSA CDM, okay. This worksheet is the concept document matrix. The concepts appear in the columns. Act like numerical variables in your model. And the rows are documents which are the same as cases or observations. Therefore, this doc concept document matrix can be used as input to any of Excel miners' clustering, classification, and prediction algorithms. For example, you can use a classification method to create a classification model using the concept document matrix to classify new documents based on the text content, whether they belong to the autos group or the electronics group. So, we just saw how you can get productive results from text. Excel Miner text mining tool can be used 
to classify customer reviews as satisfied or not satisfied, distinguish between which products has the least negative reviews, extract the topics of articles, cluster the documents or terms, and etc. Now on to feature selection. Let me open a blank workbook. Okay, find a new. Okay, and let's click on examine a platform. Feature selection in both Excel Miner Pro and Excel Miner Platform helps you identify which of the all of the hundreds of your variables or columns of data have the most predictive power to feed into your classification or prediction algorithms. Let's open the Boston Housing Dataset. Again, click on Help, Examples. Should we have this open? Okay, we click on Boston Housing. This is the Boston Housing Dataset with 14 variables, each describing a census tract. This is only 14 variables, but imagine that you had 100 variables instead of 14 like we have here. A lot of these variables are going to overlap each other. Some are going to be uh, important, some may not. You can use all of them in your classification or prediction algorithms, but it is going to be very time consuming. Feature selection is a preliminary step just like visualization. You can use it to quickly find out which variables are most significant and then concentrate the rest of your analysis on those. So let me show you how we can do this on this small data set. I mean, it has 14 variables, but compared to 100, of course, this is small. In this data set, cat.medv is a categorical variable derived from the MEDV or median value of owner-occupied homes. I'm going to choose cat.medv as our output variable with the goal of later building a classification model. Now, let's click on examine platform, click on explore, and then feature selection. In this first dialog, let's select uh, MEDV, cat.medv as our output variable. Now let's select all of the other variables except median value of owner occupant homes as continuous variable. Make sure that uh, make sure to confirm that Excel Miner recognizes this as a classification task by choosing categorical for our output variable. You can see output variable type categorical. Let's click on next. Now we are going to select all statistical filters, Welch's test, F statistic, Fisher score, and Gini index. Now let's click on output options or next. Uh, we can choose the you can choose the top features table to produce a report containing only top variables and indicated by number of features edit box. I'm going to actually increase this number, for example, to five, and uh, Feature importance plot is selected by default, and this is a graphical representation of variable importance based on the measure selected here in the rank by menu. And let's keep it watch test, watch just test. Now I think we can keep all the remaining default settings and then click on finish to run the feature selection for classification. Here is the variable importance plot, which ranks the variables in order of importance according to Welch's test. The top five most relevant variables are LSTAT, RM, industry, PT ratio, and tax. Let's close the plot and go to detailed feature selection report. Here, we are analyzing the data using several different statistical tests of their importance. By looking at how different variables are ranked according to different tests, we can get an idea whether these variables are consistently showed up as the most important or not. 
then you can focus on those variables as inputs to a prediction or classification algorithm. For example, let's look at the Welch's test statistics. In order of magnitude, like with the biggest man magnitude is uh, LST80, is 21. And then, uh, then we have uh, RM, which is 16. We are looking at magnitude. Then we have industry, 10. We have PT ratio, 10. And then tax is 8. And then the rest of them are less than that. So we get the same, same, same result. Now I want to show you that, for example, with Gini index, Gini index measures the variable's ability to distinguish between classes. The smaller the Gini index, the more relevant the variable. So if I sort by Gini index, for example, here from uh, smallest to largest, you can see that, again, RM, LSTAT, industry, PD ratio, and tax are our top five most variables. So mm, uh, at this point, we already have a lot of useful information about our variables and their relationship to the category called cat.medv variable. We started out with all those features, like 14, and now we know rather quickly that only five of them really matter the most. Now, after this, we can practice creating classification models, yet instead of using all original variables, you can just use these most important ones. Now, let's discuss the time series analysis. Time series is a set of observations on a quantitative variable collected at equal time intervals. Stock prices, exchange rates, consumer price index, or unemployment rate are examples of time series. Excel Miner includes ARIMA and smoothing methods. Smoothing techniques smooth out random variations in time series data and reveal underlying trends and patterns. Let's open the AirPass dataset. Let's go to that example workbook and click on AirPass is the first one. This dataset contains the monthly totals of international air passengers from 1949 to 1960. Here we have only time variable and a quantitative variable, which is the number of passengers that is collected over time each month. Now, let me show you how we can use Chart Wizard to explore this airline passenger's time series data. Click on Excel Mine Platform, Explore Chart Wizard, and this time let's use the line chart, click on Next. Let's choose Passenger for our uh, first variable. Next, we use Month uh, for our x-axis and click Finish. As it can be seen, this figure suggests that the data is non-stationary. It has a strong upward trend, and also it has a seasonal pattern. Therefore, forecasts of future values for this time series would be more accurate if they reflected this seasonal effect. So let's close this chart, discard it. Uh, select the cell within the data. This time, instead of using partition on the fly, we are going to use the partition on the ribbon. So click on partition in the time series group. Now uh, we have a time variable, which is month. Let's select our time variable. Now passengers is our variable, variable in the partition data. Let's select it. Let's keep all the default settings and click OK. Here is our partition data data partition TS. Okay. Now let's select the cell within the data. Click on smoothing. Hold winters. Three additional menu items will appear. Multiplicative, additive, and no trend. With no trend in data yet having seasonality, the third hold winters model can be used. During this practice, we use multiplicative method as the visualization of data shows a strong upward trend. Let's click on multiplicative. OK, month is already selected automatically as our time variable. Let's choose passenger 
as our passengers, as our selected variable by clicking on this button. Now, since the seasonality in this data set appears every 12 months, let's enter 12 for the period. Now you can see number of complete seasons is automatically updated to 7. And then we can keep the default settings for alpha, beta, and gamma. You could also use the optimize for optimizing these weights. And produce forecast on validation. Let's click OK. Here are the results. The MSE or mean uh, square error for this uh, training data is 112. And then let's take a look at the time plots. As shown in the graph for training data, using the multiplicative model, the actual and forecasted values match up fairly well. Yet, the usefulness of the model in, the for in forecasting will depend upon how close the actual and forecasted values are in the time plot of validation set. So let's verify that. Let me scroll to the right. Okay, here is the chart. It seems that the multiplicative model captures the data very well, as the actual and forecasted values in the time plot of validation set match up fairly well. This shows that our model is a good fit to our data. Now for a final recap. Every action in your business generates data which can be a valuable strategic asset for your decision making. Data mining enables you to find and extract useful information, discover patterns, and gain insights from your data sets. And this ability to use data intelligently is a vital skill for business analysts. Excel Miner gives you all the tools you need to visualize and transform your data in Excel and apply prediction, classification, and affinity analysis methods. Excel Miner is just one component of Analytics Solver Platform, a complete tool set for your predictive and prescriptive analytics. During this session, we used Excel Miner Platform. You can get our data mining software as a standalone program, such as the Excel Miner Platform or Excel Miner Pro. It is also offered within Analytics Solver Platform or Analytics Solver Pro. Analytics Solver Platform includes forecasting, data mining, simulation risk analysis, decision trees, and conventional and stochastic optimization for problems of any size. And Analytics Solver Pro is a complete solution for medium-sized problems. Now, you might be asking, what is your next best step? If you have not already registered on our website, please do so. It allows you to download a free trial of Analytics Solver platform, which includes Excel Miner platform, and gives you access to downloadable user guide and example databases. Try this yourself and let us know if you have any questions via live chat, email, you can always reach me at consulting at solver.com or call us at this special, special number for this webinar attendees, 775-832-0123. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to have shared in this online training with you. If you have any questions, please type them to the chat box or feel free to contact me. Uh, send your questions or comments to consulting at solver.com. While we are here, let me show you how you can access Excel Miner User Guide. Uh, click on Help and then User Guide. This is a comprehensive help that walks you through all the algorithms, their options, and all the details. Then you can go to our YouTube channel. This is another source with lots of videos and demo videos. YouTube user frontline solvers. And then 
you can uh, go and check out our data mining videos. This is the Excel Miner data mining quick demo videos. And then we have also 30 minute training videos and there is a comprehensive one overview of X data mining with Excel Miner. Okay, thank you very much. We look forward to future webinars with you and appreciate your time. Bye for now. Thank you again.